forget to subscribe to my channel and while you're at it, click the bell to be notified of future videos. Welcome to the Square On Point Sew Along. This is part two of eight and part one was just the introduction. I just do that to keep my videos and my instruction sheets in order. So this is the second set of sheets and the second video of eight. There will be this week and for the next five weeks after that we'll have two blocks each Monday. So for a total of 12 blocks and then the final week which is week eight we'll talk about the setting instructions and how to set your quilt with sashing and cornerstones. Let's get started on the first block. It was done May 16th and it's called Hidden Squares and these blocks all finish at 12 inches. Here is the diagram. This block is a four by four grid. The units in each grid space are three inch finished. So the half square triangle is three inch finished. The flying geese unit takes up two spaces in the grid, so it's three inches by six inches finished. And then the square on point in the center takes up four spaces in the grid, and it's six by six inch finished. Before I go through all of these patches, I want to try to describe what I mean by a patch and what a patch actually is. So let's look at patch B. This is a six inch finished quarter square triangle. To get that patch you cut a seven and one quarter inch square and then you cut the square in half twice diagonally and you'll get four patches. You see each one of these is a patch so when it says four patches, you'll cut one square, cut it twice in half, and you'll get four patches. If you're rotary cutting and you're, you're just going to cut up every, all the pieces into patches and sew the patches together, this is what you'll do. And if you are using the AccuQuilt, you are cutting patches. So if you use the AccuQuilt to cut this, it's actually one die with a big square on it and all the blades will cut these four patches all at once. So this is one square or when you cut it it's four patches. And this is, uh, this is patch A and it is a half square triangle. It started off as a square. You cut the square three and seven eighth inches. Then you cut it in half once diagonally and you'll get two patches. This is a patch and this is a patch. And if you were making a half square triangle and this was a different color, you would simply sew the two patches together and you would have your half square triangle. These other ones, we are going to use a different method for making half square triangles and for making flying geese. When we use this method, we keep the squares. We, we make two at a time for half square triangles or we make four at a time flying geese and you'll see demos of both of that in this video. But these were is the square on point that we're going to do and you can't leave this in square. You have to have patches. So you'll piece these like this and this is why you have to have these patches. This square which is patch C is also a patch. This is its smallest form in this block. So these, this is a patch, 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 patch. They're all patches because they're not going to be cut anymore before you sew them to something. Now let's look at all the patches. Patch A is a three inch finished half square triangle. And this patch is used in all three of our units. It's used in the half square triangles in the corners, it's used in the flying geese, and it's used in the square on point that I just showed you. For the half square triangles and the flying geese, we're going to use the method two at a time half square triangles and four at a time flying geese. So we don't cut those in patches. And if you look here on the the fabrics, this one you cut four patches if you're using the patches or you cut two squares. For the background you cut 12 patches or you cut six squares. And this one is just four patches because 
This is for the square on point and we're using patches for that. So patch A is a 3 inch finished half square triangle. We cut 3 and 7 8 inch squares if you're rotary cutting and you cut it once on the diagonal for two patches. So if you are rotary cutting these, you'll need to cut two squares and then cut each one in half diagonally. Patch B is a 6 inch finished quarter square triangle. For rotary cutting, you cut seven and a quarter inch squares. You cut them in half twice on the diagonal for four patches. And that's what you need of this fabric. Here are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut this. And finally, patch C is the six inch finished square on point. It is one patch. You cut four and three quarter inch square. You just need one. And here are the AccuQuilt dies. We're going to start by piecing the half square triangles and we're going to use the two at a time method. So these are the half square triangles. These are the three and seven eighth inch squares and we're leaving them in squares so we can do our method of two at a time. If you're not familiar with this method, stay tuned for a short tutorial that shows you how. On the back side of the light fabric, we're going to draw a diagonal line, put the fabrics together, right sides together, and we're going to stitch on either side of the diagonal line. Here is the diagonal line drawn and then the stitching on both sides. Now we cut this in half along the diagonal line. Then we have our two half square triangles. Press the seams open and cut off the nubs. On step two, we'll take the four light A patches, R squares, and the B patches, R square, and make four flying geese units. You can sew the patches together separately or you can do four at a time flying geese. But we'll use the four squares for the patch A and the one square from patch B. If you're not familiar with this method, stay tuned for a short tutorial that shows you how. For flying geese four at a time, you need one large square and four small squares. The large square is the geese part of the flying geese and the small squares are the sky part of the flying geese. On the back of each of the small squares draw a diagonal line. Place two of the small squares like this on the large square, right sides together. You line up these edges and make sure these lines line up. Then you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line. Here are the two stitching lines on either side of the marked line and now we cut it in half on the marked line. Now you'll open these up and press your seams open on both sides. Cut off the nubs. Now you'll place another square in this corner Here's your diagonal line and stitch on either side of the diagonal line. And do that for both of these. When you're stitching, your stitches should come out or start right at this point, this intersection here, this 90 degree angle. Cut this in half on the diagonal line and you have these two. Press your seams open and cut off your nubs. And do the same for this one. Four flying geese. Our last unit is step three, and it's our square on point. Here is our C patch, which is the square, and these are the A patches that you saw earlier. And we're just going to piece them like this for the square on point. If you're not familiar with how to piece these, a short tutorial will be at the end of this video. We're going to do the second block first, and the tutorial covers rotary cutting like this, and it also covers AccuQuilt cutting. Now I'm going to sew my square on point unit. Here are the three different units in this block. They're all finished and I like to use my prop it board. It has this fabric on it where the pieces stick to it and they don't come off. And I like it because it, you can lay them out and then take this to your sewing machine. It has a an easel in the back that pops up and you can stand it up at your sewing machine. So let's lay out the block now. 
We'll start with the square on point in the center. Then the flying geese go on the sides and the half square triangles on the corners. So the units together in the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row. Press the seams, then sew the three rows together. When you are sewing the flying geese to the half square triangle, you want these two seam lines to match down here at the bottom. To do that, you have these two put together so your flying, your flying geese is on the bottom and your half square triangle on the top or vice versa. And what you'll want to do is stack these two seams. You want them to be stacked on top of each other so when you fold this back the seam just continue, is continuous as much as possible. And you can feel it with your fingers if the seams are stacked. Now let's move on to block two. The second block for this week was done on February 23rd. It's called Kansas Star and it finishes 12 inches. Here's the diagram and you can see it is made completely of nine square on point units. So this is a nine patch block. It's a three by three grid. So we have three across and three down for a total of nine. And here's what our grid looks like. This is a 3x3 three three grid and a 12 inch block. That means each unit in each grid space finishes at 4 inches. So we're going to make 9 4 inch finished square on point units. 4 will be one color and 5 will be the other. Patch A is a 2 inch finished half square triangle and these are the triangle points on the corners of each unit. We'll cut two and seven eighth inch squares, cut them in half once on the diagonal for two patches. For the background fabric we'll need 20 patches. That means you'll have to cut 10 squares and cut them in half once each. And for the dark fabric we need 16 patches, which means you'll have to cut eight squares and cut each in half once. Here are the AccuQuilt dies that will cut this shape. Patch B is a four inch finished square on point. And we cut squares at three and three eighth inches. We'll need five for the yellow and four for the background. And here are the two different units we're going to make. So we'll just make the units and put the block together. This is one unit and this is the other unit. We have kind of Halloween colors here and I didn't actually do it on purpose but that's what happened. We'll make five of these and four of these. Now we just need to lay the block out and sew it together. So the top units together, the middle and the bottom, press the seams and sew the rows together. And there's the block. Now stay tuned for the tutorial on how to piece these square on point units. Thank you for watching, have a great week and we'll see you Monday. Piecing the square on point unit using rotary cutting patches. You have your four half square triangles that go on the corners and your large square in the center that's set on point. Start by piecing opposite sides, flip this over, center the square on the triangle, matching these edges, the long edge of the triangle and one side of the square. You want to see if these triangles on over here on the right and here on the left are roughly the same size. I'm going to go with that. Stitch quarter inch seam allowance all the way down. Do this side as well. Press your seams open and if you look these edges extend here. Trim these off straight in line with the, the side of the square.
put your half square triangle down with the right side facing up and then place this in the center and then check your the size of your triangles overhanging here you will start stitching right here in this V section where this point meets and this should be a quarter inch from here to the edge of this fabric start here stitch a quarter of an inch all the way to this side and you should come out here at the same part on, on this side and do that on both sides and here's what the stitching looks like and now you're going to press your seams open and here is the finished unit now I'll just trim off these little nubs on the sides and your unit's finished piecing the square on point using AccuQuilt I like to start by piecing opposite sides first and you're going to place the half square triangle piece on top we need to center it I just kind of eyeball it and I'm looking at this, this little triangle of the bottom fabric poking out here you can barely see it it's a little triangle poking out here and then on the other side there's a little triangle poking out here what you want to do is try to get them as close to the same size as possible and your quarter of an inch should be right here at this point so you stitch from this point a quarter of an inch all the way down and you come off at this point and it's more important that you have the quarter of an inch than if you're exactly on the point and you'll do that for both sides this side and then this opposite side press your seams open now we'll flip it over and do the other two sides and now you have sides that you can match you see the triangle has the points cut off these points are going to line up with what we just sewed so if you look here you see they line up with this edge these two edges here here and across the top now you'll stitch a quarter of an inch from that point here all the way down to this other point and do that to both sides if these don't match perfectly if, if it's like it's not long enough don't stretch this triangle because you'll just make the unit wonky just center it as much as you can and stitch a quarter of an inch now we'll just press it open and it will be finished and there's your finished unit at some point when you finish your square on point unit you'll have to sew something else to it and you want to keep these points nice and sharp and sometimes you might be matching it to a seam line or a plain piece of fabric or maybe another point and I'm going to show you how to keep these points nice if you've pressed your seam open you will see where these three fabrics intersect and form a point right here that's your point on the back and it's also your point on the front so you can stitch with this part on top and you'll be able to make sure that your point stays there I take a pin and put it right there at the point and then pick it up on this back side and in this case I'm going to come down about a quarter of an inch and then put that right in the seam line that way the point will end up right on the seam line put your fabric pieces together and line up the top edges or the edges that you need to line up and make sure your pin is perpendicular goes straight down into the fabric like that if you're at an angle like this your points won't match so make sure they're straight perpendicular to the fabric and then put it into the fabric when you start sewing line up these edges here start at your quarter of an inch and sew all the way down and you're going to aim for this point where that pin goes into the fabric and you'll know that you're matching the point and the seam line on the back and straighten your bottom edge again and continue stitching a quarter of an inch off and here's what it's the stitching looks like if you can barely see it on here with this thread it goes right across here leaving the point open you're not stitching over the point and then if I flip it over you'll see it's not exactly a quarter of an inch there but that doesn't matter because what you want is the point to match 
the seam allowance here. Now just press the seam open and you're finished.